Howdy ho everybody! How's everyone doing? I hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, it's me, Gildum, here doing one of these rambling episodes because I felt like it. Uh, mainly because, I don't know, it's usually that time and I kind of wanted to get going on it and stuff along that line, that nature. Kind of wanted to ventilate something, uh, I don't really know what that is, but I'm sure I'll get to the end of this video and still not sure what, know what it is, but I'm gonna try anyways. Ugh, oh, anyways. I, I don't know how I, I can say anything other than anyways. Um, I guess I'm trying to look for some sort of segue. Uh, oh, I got something. Figured it out. Gardening, because this is Plants vs. Zombies. That's what you're seeing on the screen. Gardening. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about gardening. Let's get that out of the way, because I always have to bring it up at the same time. Uh, I don't know. I, I did learn a couple things. No plant pictures this week. Not feeling it. But on the other hand, uh, I totally have some things to say about gardening. You see... I had some pests. I've been having some pest issues, and uh, I've been I've been using some neem oil. I don't know if I really brought that up, but one of the one of the solutions I found is that neem oil is really good in trying to curb some pest issues. Like if you got some insects, uh, neem oil you can use that for a pesticide. It's pretty good. I've I've found some pretty successful results, uh, namely aphids. Because I got like some cilantro. This happened like today. Uh, I have some cilantro. I have like two things. I have like two cilantro plants. Uh, one is still kind of developing. The other one has pretty much been transplanted into a planter and everything. And it's doing fantastic. But I had some aphid issues or something along those lines. I can't really tell, but they look like aphids. Uh, so I was like, how do I do? What do I do? Uh, and then I was like, oh yeah, I got some, I got some pesticides, so I squirted, I, I sprayed it, I sprayed it, I squirted the spray gun all over my cilantro. Man, that sounded like super provocative, but <clears throat> I digress, it's not important. You see, what's important is that you go, you do that, and then you have results, and you know what, it looked like all the infestation or whatever's going on there, it, it, it's all dead. I killed the insects with the neem oil uh, solution. Uh, pesticide yeah and so like that that's pretty good the only issue I've had with like neem oil though is uh, depending on the plant because some plants are a lot more resilient and have a little bit of durability to them uh, depending on the plant neem oil can be pretty hard on leaves like lettuce and spinach uh, it leaves a lot of damage to the plant. Granted, it doesn't kill it off and it doesn't like do a super amount of damage like all the leaves kind of die, but it does leave damage spots that I've noticed. Uh, that, that's kind of one of the drawbacks I've found to neem oil. Although, it could just be my own fault because I don't know how to like, you know, proportion like the ratio of like neem oil to water and whatever you're mixing it with and pesticide and soap and uh, I want to say fungal spray, like some sort of anti-fungal spray. Uh, I want to say fungicide, but I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce that. It's basically the uh, fungal, the anti-fungal version of the pesticide, because there's a word for it. I'm just gonna say anti-fungal spray because it, it sounds it sounds better, and it's something that I think we both can understand, and I don't have to sound like a a, do, a doof. Anyways, uh, so yeah, basically, if you're making pesticide and soap, if you're making antifungal spray, you, you use baking soda instead. But I, it's still like, you know, neem oil and water. It's those three things. And so, yeah, maybe I don't know how to like mix it properly. So uh, it, it could be my own fault why I'm, why I'm doing some damage to my plants. Uh, granted, it, I do like using it because it has results. It's pretty effective. Speaking of antifungal spray, I think my spinach actually had a fungus infection. And that's no good because, you know, I like spinach. I like cooking with spinach. Hell, my grandma was actually cooking recently. She made a quiche and spinach would have been great in that. And I would have given her some leaves, but, you know, fungal infection? I don't know what kind of adverse effects that would have. You know, it could have added it. Uh, being something really serious no one really knows uh, but my point is I did spray my plant and uh, any sort of fungus like growth or whatever it seems to have died so 
I like to think that my antifungal spray has worked significantly well. It has damaged my spinach because, you know, it, it is like a ver it's a variant of the neem oil with baking soda instead of soap. But at the same time, it seems like it's doing the trick. I still have to watch it because it, it, this is a pretty recent development, but it seems like I, it's doing a very good job at actually killing off whatever I have going on there. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure how to identify the uh, type of whatever is going on. Again, I think it's fungus. I could be wrong. Maybe I have killed off some new spinach growth, but I take it unless like a white powdery substance that looks like spores and some white like growth is a uh, part of a spinach development line. I'm going to just assume it's a fungus because it seems like it has all the makings of a fungus. You know, it's kind of one of the situations where it's if it looks like a duck and it acts like a duck, it must be a duck. And I mean, that, that's kind of how I'm going about this fungus like growth sort of thing that's been infecting my spinach. And so I've been spraying it and I've been taking like precautions on it. And I, yeah, basically the antifungal spray has been pretty effective on it, and I'm pretty happy about that, because it's like, oh man, I've been protecting my plant babies, and that's fantastic. But I do have some unfortunate news, because uh, I've been having the unholy trinity when it comes to plant pests, which uh, I could be wrong, there's probably more to it than just what I'm about to name. Because I'm pretty sure like you can add all sorts of things if you think outside the box but so far what I've encountered is like you know insects fungus and now recently mammals yes that's right I've been having like squirrel issues and uh, uh, God knows what else but uh, I have a solution I did have to look this up uh, neem does not prevent mammals from getting into your stuff but at the same time there are measures you can take there's countermeasures in fact you can you can hurt them uh, I'm sure there's sprays that you know really damage them and like super toxic uh, but I don't want to do that kind of stuff cuz you know uh, me being a human which is usually in the mammal category unless like you're really thinking outside the box or you're just like humans aren't animals I mean they're kind of their own category but I mean I still choose to say that you know we're, we're mammals in every sense of the word we're warm blood we have hair and stuff like that we have hair growing on our legs and stuff I guess you could say it's kind of fur but I don't really know it's not the point the point is uh, yeah, and I'm trying to go a little organic, and I'm trying to figure out how to do things. And, uh, you know, for mammals, neem doesn't really work. Granted, it's not something I would ingest, because neem oil is not really something you want to do with that. It's not something you can necessarily cook with, much like canola oil or olive oil, or any sort of cooking oil that you can name off. That's not what neem oil is, you know. It's, it's not that. But on the other hand, uh... I mean, you can wash it, you can do the things, it, it does what it needs to do, so it's not like it's super just like, don't consume it, it's just, don't consume it like on its own, don't cook with it, it's not that kind of oil. Uh, but, I, I digress. That's not what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, I've been having some sort of mammal issues, and so in order to counteract it, I had to make some homemade pepper spray. That's, uh, that is, a, that is what I learned. You can do that. Uh, but I don't think it's necessarily as potent as actual pepper spray, the kind that you find, like, in the stores for, like, self-protection or any sort of thing like that. No, this pepper spray is, like, pretty, it's pretty simple. It's pretty basic. You, you just take, like, some of those... I want to say cayenne pepper flakes, the really hot stuff. Uh, you put them into like some sort of pan or something with water and you just let them like boil so that all the uh, essence gets mixed into the water and then you strain it and then you put it into a spray bottle and there you go, you got some homemade pepper spray. And if you don't know, the reason why this works in terms of things is because there's an active ingredient in peppers, like chili peppers. Oh god, I have to pronounce this, don't I? Uh, I think you pronounce it capsaicin. I could be wrong, but I think you pronounce it capsaicin. Uh, that's C-A-P-S-A-I-C-I-N. Capsaicin. I'm gonna pronounce it like that. If that's wrong, then I guess I am mistaken. But 
it's a, it's an active ingredient like all them chili peppers and all the really hot stuff you know it's for us mammals and anything of the like there's a part of our brain that translates that particular chemical as really really hot and spicy and it, it makes us sweat uncontrollably and it's not good but at the same time uh, we're not the only ones that suffer I mean like squirrels uh, rabbits anything really that like can perceive capsaicin as really really hot basically will turn a blind eye and not really want to like eat whatever has sprayed on like pepper sprayed upon it uh, I don't know how to word that apparently but yeah so basically I've been kind of spraying like some of my plants that seem to be inflicted with some sort of like oddities like I don't know like it seems like maybe there's a mole around like my kill or something like that within my tomatoes and my kill uh, granted neither of them have really gotten any damage but at the same time I've been spraying them just so uh, just so I can ward off anything that potentially could be damaging of a mammal sort of damage uh, I, I guess I can't word my words or I guess I can't phrase sentences there we go now I'm starting to think a little more rationally uh, yeah so I've just been trying to take and like I've been trying to take some uh, some countermeasures to make sure that my plant babies are successful and they can continue growing and I don't have any damage I was already heartbroken when my corn just kind of died you know I was really I was really excited to see if I could like test mother nature on this you know I could just like kind of do my own thing add some nutrients see if I could promote the growth a lot faster but uh, I guess I'll never know now I'll have to wait until next year but I'm fine with that I got I got extra seeds and I know I know an important lesson I gotta make sure that I spray those with some pepper spray so that uh squirrels will not get into that kind of stuff uh, I, I might plant some extra corn just in case uh, I, I'm a little nervous to do that because whenever I do that it turns out that I got way more than I anticipated but at the same time you never know and I really 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 just want to see if I can get some corn going I mean that'd be good I think everyone would like that my family not just my grandparents but like I think my mom and my stepdad they'd probably like that too uh, maybe I can give a couple of stocks to my friends uh, speaking of which I've actually been talking to where is November and now we now I think we're in like a seed exchange sort of situation where we're just gonna trade off plants and seeds and stuff like that and that's pretty dope uh, already I was telling her that uh, I, I got grapes go growing and I gotta talk to spider Mikey because he might be interested in this offer too but uh, I got grapes uh, we got a grapevine where I live and uh, you know there's uh, it's awesome but there's like a lot of grapes and it's insane and it, it goes like over the uh, it, it, it just kind of gets everywhere on the deck because uh, we have like an overhead sort of shade like covered spot and uh, grapes are just kind of going all over the place on that thing and it, it's, it's pretty cool but at the same time uh, it's pretty extreme like we're I think we're gonna have to whack in prune it like back when uh, when the time comes like at the end of at the end of its uh, growth cycle when it's starting to just kind of become dormant for winter because apparently that's what happens i digress the point that i'm trying to make here is uh it, it it's uh there's grapes growing and they have seeds and that's pretty cool and all but uh i was like yo uh i'm gonna try to get some of the seeds if uh, anyone's interested and try to like grow some uh grow some new grape vines and see how that works because uh, you know it seems like uh Seems like Where's November is interested in me, like actually trying to do that. So I'll try to grow some grapes for her. I'm gonna try to ask Spider Mike if, if he's interested in this idea. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna text him right now. I'm gonna be like, "Yo, you want some grapes?" <laughs> I should probably phrase plant in there. You know, I'll do it later. I don't want to get distracted. It's hard for me to t actually type and try to like converse, convey a topic. But I, I guess I guess I can move on to something else like uh, Bluetooth head headphones because uh, I got that going. Coincidentally, my friend just got like uh, he got like some Bluetooth speakers from like a store 
today. And I was like, ah, oh, dude, man, I got some earbuds. Uh, if I said headphones, I meant earbuds, because uh, I like earbuds. Headphones are alright too, but at the same time, like, I find they rub up against my glasses, and it, it's really, really annoying. Uh, not so much for, like, the first hour and a half, but after a while, it becomes really annoying because, uh, I don't know, it just, it, it's really annoying, kind of hurts my ears a little bit. So it's like, you know, I, I like doing the earbud thing because uh, it's a lot more laxed, it's a lot more easier on my ears and they don't rub up against my glasses and I can just kind of chill out with them for hours on end and not have to worry about too much. Maybe, maybe I'm just really picky about that. But that's how I feel and that's how I like doing things. Earbuds are amazing, I, li I like them much better than headphones, but you know, sometimes, sometimes there's some pretty comfortable headphones so uh, I, who am I to say who am I to say about like preference in my stars things the earbuds are my preference so that's what I go with and I got some pretty nice ones I was going on the Amazon site just seeing like what they had cuz my old ones broke the ones that I use for less playing and stuff like that they broke or I, I think they broke uh, or something happened. I don't know. They kept cutting in and out, and then they just kind of stopped. And it's like, are, are you still working? What's going on here? I mean, maybe, maybe they just kind of, they kind of died. I mean, they were like a thirty-dollar pair, which isn't too bad. I, I don't mind. It's just like I did not get any longevity out of these things. They just kind of, they were really cool. They worked. I was able to listen to things at full volume while my grandparents slept. Because, I mean, there's, there's like, some quiet time at a certain point. They go to bed, I'm still awake. Because my schedule is pretty much tailored to the night time. Because I work nights and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm very used to being up when everyone else is asleep. Except for except for all the night owls. Because uh, th that's the cool time. Nighttime is the, is the cool time. Uh, anyways. So, yeah. It's like, I really like having Bluetooth earbuds. Because my TV can do the thing I can listen to stuff at full volume not really have to be like all quiet and have to have things ca like catered to their sort of situation it works out very well for me but it's really sad when I can't like do do the thing and also you know I like having earbuds so that I can actually like listen to stuff when I do less plays and stuff like that it's, it's really beneficial to have that kind of stuff going on but yeah, it's like, my Bluetooth earbuds, they quit, and I was like, oh man, because it turns out, after I do this, after I finish, like, producing this, I gotta do some more parts for, like, World of Final Fantasy, and, uh, you know, for a game like that, it's really beneficial to be able to hear everything, especially the music, because usually the music is referencing one of the games, one of the many installments. And so, if I can't listen to what's going on, it's not going to help me in the slightest. And that sucks, because, you know, sometimes I want to hear, like, what something is going. Because I catch a lot of references, and I catch a lot of whatever they're trying to refer to. Uh, like, for instance, if there's something going on, like, a song from Final Fantasy V, which I shouldn't really know, because I never really played that game. But, you know, like, Final Fantasy VII... Final Fantasy 6. I don't think we've actually encountered anything from 6 quite yet. I could be wrong though. I could. I don't know. But at the same time, it, it is just one of those things where it's like it's more beneficial to have this thing going on than not being able to hear it. Like straight up not being able to hear it. That really sucks. So yeah, I was I was getting a little nervous. I was like, oh man, I need to I need to do this like now, how am I ever going to have it before time? But it turns out that I got, like, free one-day shipping. So, uh, yeah, I just got some new Bluetooth earbuds within a day. And that's that's dope, man. That's hella tight. Also, they're, like, a $100 pair. So, I like the ones that I got. Uh, these ones should have a lot of durability. But I did not pay $100 because apparently they had a sell going on. So, I paid about the same amount that I paid for my old ones. And these ones are hot. Bleh, hot. They're a lot higher quality so yeah in turn they're pretty hot <laughs> uh but yeah you know it's like I i'm really excited these these ones that i got they're uh they're sport like earbuds so you know they got they got like everything going for them oh man they're also n noise canceling so uh i i am super into this oh i'm i'm really excited i can't wait to actually start doing some less playing going on
But I digress, cause I'm not, we're not there yet. I'm not there yet. You know, I gotta, I gotta do the part properly, right? Uh, I'm just rambling anyways. So yeah, I got a friend who just bought some Bluetooth speakers and he was asking me how are, how are my earbuds and I, I don't know. I don't know, I, I haven't tried them yet. I'm gonna in like five seconds. Oh, okay. Maybe in like ten minutes, but uh, you know, I can wait. It's not that big of an issue. Also, I probably have to sync it up with my TV because, uh, uh, like, starting to acquire, like, about new technology and trying to sync it up can be a little bit of a pain. I've been there. I've, I had to do it with my old set of earbuds. Mm. So, yeah, you know, it's. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. Theoretically, it should take about five seconds and then I should be good to go. On the other... Oh no, it's murder time. I hear the crows already. <laughs> if you don't know, there is a certain part of the day where basically a whole bunch of crows just like come in and they start like squawking all over the place. Oh, they're starting to gather. So if you hear that, that that's what that is. Uh, it's pretty... Oh my god, there's an air balloon. There's a hot air balloon in the distance. That's kind of romantic. I don't think I could do it. I gotta be honest. Uh, really scared of heights. Uh, there's a word for that, but I can't think of it, and I'm not gonna look it up. Uh, I'm sure someone already knows what it is. So, uh, feel free to post that in the comments section. I appreciate it. If no one's gonna post that, well then I guess we'll never know. Uh, anyways... Not the point that I'm trying to make. I was I was talking about crows because murder time, right? Uh, if you don't know, basically there is a time of the day when all the crows gather in in like a huge flock and they just like flat out the sky and like in in like a beautiful crow like fashion, just in a huge flock. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's really loud and really crazy and a little creepy. And I call it murder time because. Uh, as we all know, or if you don't, basically a flock of crows is called a murder. And so that, there's two hot air balloons. Oh wow, I was not expecting that. that, that that's kind of cool. I wonder if they're having a conversation. I feel like that that would be kind of awesome, but again, I'm scared of heights, so uh, I don't, I don't want to be the guy. I'll just talk to them in a walkie-talkie or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I think if I wasn't, I would totally be doing that. And I'd be like, Yo, Phil! How's it going? And, and they'd, uh, they'd probably respond with something along those lines. Uh, but I don't know anyone named Phil, so uh, I guess my example is devoided on me. Like, uh, I've already failed. Oh, well. But I, I don't know. Hot air balloons are kind of cool. Uh, I, I think... Uh, they're also a little unsafe. I, I'm a little too scared to try it out, but anyone who's done it, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. It takes a lot of courage. I think if you were going on a date, that'd be pretty awesome. At least if someone's really into that. I think I think there's a lot of romance when it comes to that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know, though. I'm, I'm pretty bad when it comes to romance. I don't really know a whole lot about the subject. I've only had one girlfriend, and uh, that, that was a bad situation. But at the same time, she did say something really interesting, which was like, apparently, I talk in my sleep, but it's very incoherent. So, uh, I I've always had, like, this kind of curiosity about, like, videotaping me as I sleep, because apparently, uh, I, I, I will talk in my sleep, but it's very weird and absurd, and no one can really tell what it is, or so I've heard. I'm kind of curious to see how that ends up. I mean, maybe it's like one of those things where it's like it's all coded and it's like, oh man, turns out I've been trying to contact the Eldritch Horrors and so Great Cthulhu, he's gonna come out and just like do a thing. Uh, possibly, but no one knows. I don't really know. I mean, that's probably not what's gonna happen, but if it did happen, I mean, that, that'd be pretty awesome and terrifying because, uh, let's be honest, if Great Cthulhu awoke, um... I don't think anyone knows what that really entails, uh, but I think the consensus is it's not good. Uh, I could be wrong, though. I don't really know too much about Great Cthulhu. I don't know what would happen if Great Cthulhu came out and just, like, was like, Hey, I'm Great Cthulhu. I don't think he'd say that. I don't think he'd announce himself like that, though. Uh... Uh, part of me likes to think it'd be like the South Park episode with, uh, with, uh, was it, the Coon and Friends? 
I did see that one. That was that was kind of all right. Uh, it, it might turn out like that. It might not turn like that, out like that. Uh, I might have it completely backwards. I don't think anyone knows. Uh, the Cthulhu Mythos is kind of a is kind of a weird thing to go about. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it, it, it's a mythos. It's a thing. It exists. That is a bird. It looks like a sparrow. It's a little small songbird. I don't know what it's doing. It's just perching on a bush outside my window. I live on the second floor, though, so, I mean, it, I'm looking down on it. Uh, birds are kind of cool. I've owned one in my life. I had a parakeet. It was dope. It lived for about like seven years. Uh, so you know, it, it was it was pretty old. It was pretty awesome. Um, I called it Rex. He was he was my BFF. Uh, occasionally we'd get his wings clipped so I could take him out of his cage and I could just like play with him uh, gently, mind you. I was a little kid, but I wasn't a monster. I'd like to I like to make this known, you know. I, I wasn't a tyrant when it came to owning pets, you know. I was like uh, I tried to be a gentle child, you know. I, I had to learn sensitivity sort of things cuz uh, you know, you you can toss your pets around or you can just leap pet your pets and uh, learn that, you know, it's not good to theoretically just like abuse your pets. Um I guess like not unbeknownst that you're actually abusing them because you know kids I feel like kids don't really know better but you have to teach them and the mom really tried to enforce that really early on especially with the fact that we owned several cats and uh, she wanted to make sure I wasn't straight out just like um, throwing them around I was kind of a wild child but not not that wild uh, uh, I hear I was like a real I was a real sweetheart back in the day um, a real sweet child uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I had to learn a lot of things, and I was, like, scared all the time, because my mom would watch scary movies a lot, and unbeknownst to me, I didn't like that. Uh, I, I was not like I am today, where, like, I will just turn on Resident Evil and, like, like play it start to finish in one sitting if I have the whole day off, and, and that's what I plan to do. Uh, no, back in the day, I could not handle, like, things, and my mom would make up, like... Uh, things to be ten times scarier. For instance, there is this enemy in uh, Link to the Past called Bag of Worms. When I was a kid, it, it was like the scariest thing I ever saw because I could not comprehend what it's trying to be. What is it? And so, for some reason, that enemy scared the shit out of me as a kid. And I, even to today, I don't really understand why. Maybe it's because it has a very sporadic movement and it jumps and it's got little tendrils coming out of it. Uh, if I can find a picture, like a sprite picture, I will post it. But uh, if I can't, uh, I'm sorry. I, I just have to like I have to describe it in best in the best of details that I can. But yeah, it was, it was a really weird enemy and it was just like I could not figure it out. Likewise, in Ocarina of Time, you have what is it like the uh, the shadow hands or I can't think the the floor master or like the those uh the wall master it's called the wall master i don't know it's the hand monster that comes out of like the ceiling and just grabs you i think there's other forms of it where it doesn't do that it just like straight up punches you and it like multiplies and it can become like multiple of the things as it grows or something along those lines but i'm talking about the ones that will just come out from the ceiling in uh ocarina of time and they'll just grab you and like take you back to i think even either a previous room or the beginning of the dungeon uh really annoying enemy and scared the shit out of me as a kid because it's like a severed hand and it's it's creepy and it wasn't even like the the look and design of the enemy it was what it did it was like the spirit of the unknown thing going on with it uh it, it scared the shit out of me as a kid I was I was really afraid of a lot of things, and my mom really liked watching a lot of scary movies. And uh, it wasn't it wasn't like she wouldn't let me watch them, but at the same time, it wasn't like she she wanted me to watch them. It was more along the lines of uh, if she was watching them, she'd let me know ahead of time that it's really scary and uh, I probably shouldn't watch it. But at the same time, she wouldn't stop me from like watching it. Uh, one of those like you're you sh you're gonna learn the hard way sort of things uh, my mom had a lot of like teaching methods like that and I you know for my money I think it's a pretty good way to learn uh, if as long as it's not like super detrimental like uh, fork in an outlet socket I mean my mom would never like do anything along those lines that that's terrible 
I mean, Grad, yeah, you'd learn, but uh, you'd also suffer the slight chance of death. And that's no good for anyone. Uh, but, like, for my money, my mom would always just, like, she liked the scary movies and she liked watching them. And, uh, you know, my mom, my mom was, like, super, like, attached to me in a lot of ways. Like, we'd do a lot of things together. And I, I, that was pretty cool. We'd play video games together when I was really young. Because I was an only child. I didn't have any siblings or anything of the like. So, for a lot of the time, uh, my mom would do a lot of things with me. Also, I was I was like her her sweet baby boy. I was I was totally a mama's boy. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sugarcoating it. I I hung out with my mom a lot when I was really young. Uh, she would play the video games. She'd watch the scary movies. Uh, oftentimes, she'd say like, "Why don't you go to your room and play like some Nintendo or something like that?" We had like Tetris and like Super Mario Brothers. I remember playing Duck Hunt. We had that. Uh, and so, like, you know, I would do this kind of stuff. I would have a lot of fun, like, playing the Nintendo games, and also, I remember I would, uh, I would watch some scary movies with her, and I, w I would, like, cling to her, like, no tomorrow, because I, I would get scared by a lot of things, and I'd have, like, uh... My imagination would go wild. It wasn't like I really had a lot of nightmares, but I remember, like, my imagination would go wild with, like, all these, like, impulsive thoughts of, like, what if this happens? What if that happens? It's like, what the fuck is gonna happen to me? Of course, as a kid, I mean, it probably wasn't quite like that, but, like, as an adult, it, it, it really felt like that. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's, it is what it is, but it's like my mom, like... She she really liked the horror movies. I remember watching like uh, the thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, like uh, when I was really young, and that scared the shit out of me. And it like it's not even the fact that like the movie is pretty like graphic a lot of the time, but the thing that really scared me was like the dog transformation scene, because like one, like I'll, Gildam likes the animals. Okay, let's not sugarcoat it. Gildam fucking loves animals i'm totally into like owning pets and i'm totally into like you know having a dog and a cat i can't but you know i, I like i like animals a lot they're they're awesome uh, oh man i need to go to the zoo at some point i need to go soon just it just occurred to me i haven't done that this year uh maybe in september i got some time off coming in september okay i think i know what i'm doing like at least one of my days when i got off anyways <laughs> So yeah, aside from me planning my schedule ahead of time, um, the thing, the one scary scene from that is when you got the dog transforming, and I'm sure you could probably find it on YouTube, but if you can't, take my word for it, it is really fucked up, because like, the, the thing, it's, it's a movie, it's a, it's a sci-fi horror movie, where you got this alien that's a shapeshifter, and it can like turn into anything, and the first form it takes is a dog, and no one knows that it's an alien, so it's just going around the compound, just like acting like a dog, and everyone's like, oh, hey puppy, how's it going? And so then they put it in with the rest of the dogs, and it's really fucked up, because uh, you, you see it like kind of a, like, absorbing some some dogs and all the dogs are going crazy and then you see it transform and it's really fucked up and it has like tendrils coming out of it and it's it's like super graphic and uh i, I swear because it's like i want to say it's like 1987 that's when the movie came out i want to say that i don't know i don't have the facts in front of me but it was like something like that it was like the late 80s uh i remember like, it, it's pretty animatronic. There's a lot of animatronics within that movie, and it's really graphic and, and crazy, and I, I would not expect something like that as a kid, and it really scarred me for life. I have nightmares about it, along with the liquor from Resident Evil 2, and, uh, and, uh, I can't think of anything else. I mean, there was a lot of things. The Headless Genova scene from Final Fantasy VII really stuck with me. I had never really had any nightmares because there's nothing really horrific about it, unlike the liquor, which uh, there's a lot of things horrific because it's a pretty active, like, thing that comes after you. But, like, the Headless Genova, not really so much, uh, I, I guess. I, but, like, as a kid, my mom couldn't comprehend that shit, and now it's, like, super outdated, so... <laughs> Be it as it may, yeah... I just, uh, I, I had a lot of fears back as a kid. Now I'm, like, super into horror. Go figure.
But anyways, with all this said, I think I'm going to end it off here. So without further ado, this has been Raveling with Gildum, talking about stuff. I'm just going to sum it up as to stuff. Uh, I hope you, you enjoyed listening to me go off on any subject that I can here and now. But otherwise... Yeah, I'm, I'm a, you have a good night, you have a good day whenever you're listening to this. If you're listening to it, you have a good time doing whatever you do. And thank you for watching, and as always, uh, I don't know, you can check out the other stuff that I do. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Also, I have a Twitter, so you can go check that out too.